Hi, this is Bill Allett, and we're here to talk about uh, the application of the persona as far as startups. We're very lucky to have today with us uh, Shambhavi Kadam, uh, who is an undergraduate in Aero Astro here at MIT, and then came, uh, went and worked, and then came back to uh, MIT Sloan School of Management. So she's both a, a technology person and a business person, and she was our student in a number of classes and programs, and her with Kim Gordon, um, who is also a student, uh, is going to talk today about um, the persona in relation to their company, Medium, which they just started. So can you tell us about Medium, first of all, Shambhavi? Yeah, absolutely. So Medium is doing for art the same thing that iTunes did for music. That's moving it away from paper and canvas and onto digital screens to make sure artists get their work seen and get paid. So one of the things that's very important for entrepreneurs is to be very focused uh, and be specific, not general. And for Medium, you know, when you guys start out, you had an idea, but then you really seem to take hold once you got a persona. And a persona is a real person. Can you talk about, you know, how that process worked for you? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, before you can get, develop a persona, you kind of need a hypothesis of who you think this person is going to be. And when we started, we thought our persona was going to be businesses and companies. So the first thing we went out is we, we created a wish list of all the people we wanted to interview, and we tapped our networks to find people in these different industries to talk to. And after doing about 15 or 20 interviews, we realized that this was not the right direction for us to go in. And so that's, that's a bit of a scary feeling as an entrepreneur because you've spent like a couple of months you know, going down this one path. And then you realize, well, it's good. It's probably not the first place for you to start. So we kind of looped back around, created a different hypothesis, and uh, created another wish list of the types of people we wanted to interview. And then we went to our networks again and started interviewing as many people who fell into this hypothesis uh, as possible to see if they were the right people. And, uh, and the more interviews you do, the more detail you get around who this person is, what they look like, what their motivations are, and what their pain points are to see if they're the right person for you. So for us, it was just talking to tons and tons and tons of people to figure out who the persona is. I, re I remember when you, you, you it was actually Charlie, who won't use his last name, said, you, you really have to go after the hotels. That's yeah. a really good business. And it all made sense, mm -hmm. but then Charlie wasn't from the hotel industry, and then when you went out and, and talked to them, mm -hmm. that persona told you, no, that's not the way it works. Yeah. And, and you found a better one. And I mm -hmm. think that's a really, really good point, is that you can't sit and analyze this thing mm -hmm. on the internet um, you got to go out and talk to real people. Yeah, exactly. I think if you do secondary research, you, you think you have what you want. And the, the, you can trip up and try to keep chasing after the same thing because you've just put invested so much in it. But you have yeah. to be willing to let go of your preconceived hypotheses and notions and realize that, hey, I'm actually barking up the wrong tree right now. So right. I need to, to re-examine what I'm doing and try to go get a new uh, persona. Mm -hmm. Your hypothesis. So when, when, let's talk about the value of the persona because you and Kim were up there and you, you, you seem to just get more and more focused as time went on. You were in the Beehive Cooperative over here. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know that you had to make a lot of tough decisions about what to do and what not to do mm -hmm. because you only had finite time and resources. Right. Can you talk about the role of the persona in that process and, and give some specific examples if you could? Yeah, absolutely. So the persona is, our persona is based on real people. So we took, we took the interviews that we did and we aggregated them and uh, every, every element of our persona is based on someone real and something that they told us personally that applies to them. And I think that's so much more compelling when you're going out to do your marketing strategy or trying to develop your product because you have this information that someone told you directly. It's like the best type of uh, a direct source research where mm -hmm. people have given you this information about what problems they have and you know how you can help them fix it mm -hmm. so it it really helps you be very specific in marketing and product development so you make sure you're you're creating something that is valuable can you give us a specific example where you and Kim were sitting up there in the beehive trying to decide to do a or B or C I know this is off the cuff but is there anyone you can think of because um, I remember there were times where, should we use an iPad or should we use an Android? Let's do both, and we can't do both. Yeah, actually, so one example is, um, I guess one example of a persona type that evolved that we didn't think would be our target persona is we were just uh, 
playing around with the idea in the beehive and a couple of guys came up and you know they knew nothing about art and they just happened to to see what we were doing and they were like oh these pieces are really great but I would never know to pick that out by ourselves or by myself and you know if somebody just told me which pieces to have up there and if I had a product that just like put them up on the wall for me that would be something I would definitely pay for. It's very interesting we see that a lot with the persona really helps you define the user experience because mm -hmm. While you know there's a value proposition, the persona, um, is, you know, you, you can kind of do that intellectually and the persona will agree with it, but the user experience is a much more kind of amorphous, iterative yeah. process. Oh, most definitely. I think every feature that we've developed on Medium has come from a specific persona that we developed and a problem that they had with the way they consumed art currently. So, so you also took the class with uh, Brian Halgren, I guess Kim did for yeah, sure. Yeah, I ordered and, it. <laughs> and, and, he, he always talks about uh, is that you need a persona, but then you need your anti-persona as well. Mm -hmm. You know, a persona is this is the person we're going to satisfy. Mm -hmm. But then here's a persona of someone that is not our customer. Did you ever use an anti-persona? Uh we actually flipped some of our personas into anti-personas as, <laughs> as we started uh, doing some alpha testing and we realized we thought this person was you know part of our persona but right, right. there's some subtle changes to their behavior the way they think that make them our anti-persona right. so it's just it becomes um keywords or, or key ways that they think that you know don't jive with the type the type of customer that you're looking for right, so right. you kind of put it on your watch list of this person is not necessarily going to be our target or they fit every criteria except this one and you kind of have to you kind of have to knock them out because of that. And, and this is an excellent point about personas because you're doing all this primary market research and it's very time consuming and you don't want to do primary market research on people who aren't your real customer. So mm -hmm. having a persona and an anti-persona mm -hmm. allows you to focus your customer research which is very you know it would say resource intensive and then you can really start to see the patterns. Well listen yeah. I want to thank you very much uh, you, and, you and Kim are making us so proud. It's Medium, and they're going to be extremely successful coming to your house soon. The iTunes for art. digital art.